So I want to talk about something that's kind of neat regarding Bible prophecy about the Dead Sea coming back to life. Um, this was recently reported, published on February 19th, 2023 by Asaf Kamar. And it's talking about uh, ynetnews.com, mystery of strange plant found inside salt cave of the Dead Sea. After an extreme excursion into the depths of a salt cave, researchers uncovered what looks like a photosynthesis-defying plant. Cave expert who originally stumbled upon it says, scientists told him he was hallucinating. After a phone call from Shlomi Lobatan, a cave expert and tour guide who identified a strange plant in the depths of a cave near the Dead Sea, the prior knowledge of scientists on photosynthesis was put to question, prompting a broad interest. Photosynthesis, a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy, assumes that plants need light in order to thrive. I saw a tiny stalk of a plant coming out of one of the cracks deep in the salt cave in Mount Sodom, says Labaton. Intrigued, he invited Professor Zach Adam, a senior and internationally renowned botanist from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem to join him on the journey to the depths of the salt caves. Equipped with helmets, headlamps, and cameras, they crawled into the narrow cave. After some intensive crawling, they found themselves in a large space with remains of a wooden cabin, which Labaton explained used to belong to the Dead Sea workers who operated there decades ago before the cave's opening collapsed due to the decreasing sea levels. Surrounded by bats, Labaton said that during one of his weekly guided tours to this cave, he stumbled upon a plant emerging from one of the walls. I thought it had been swept away by the flood or something, he says. I pulled at it and then I feel the tug as it would be as if it was sprouted to the stone. I called people from the field of science and no one knew what it was. No one had heard of it. They told me I was hallucinating, and then we continued to crawl deeper into the cave, going through an even narrower passage to get to the next open space. Though we were physically exhausted by this point, the beautiful sight of the depths of the cave took our breath away. Labaton began to sweep the cave's walls for the plant he had encountered before. After some searching, he shouted, I found it! We all rushed toward him to see where his flashlight was pointing. And indeed, in a small crack in the wall, a tiny stem could be seen popping out. If I were to tell a colleague that I was deep in a salt cave investigating the possibility of a plant growing inside of a cave, he would have thought that with age I had completely lost my mind, Professor Adams says. The narrow crack from which the tiny stem emerges is full of salt and shiny quartz crystals, what looks like toxic and hostile soil. However, Professor Adam reassured that there were many organisms that thrive in salt-concentrated environments. But the fact that there is no light means there's no way for the plant to undergo photosynthesis in a cave and live in complete darkness, he says. As Professor Adam took out his Swiss Army knife to cut a sample, Labaton suddenly found a voluminous cluster of additional stems and a moment of celebration ensued. The professor was left at a loss for words and went on to take a sample of the finding, which he said would make its way to the university's lab at the Faculty of Agriculture in Revod. Stay tuned to discover what the botanic experts have to say about the small stem of the salt caves. Then Israel 365 News weighed in on this story by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, February 22nd, 2023, which is today. And it said, plant found in Mount Sodom has scientists baffled. Ezekiel's Dead Sea prophecy may solve the mystery. 
Ezekiel 47, 8. This water, he told me, runs out to the eastern region and flows into the Arabah. And when it comes into the sea, into the sea of foul waters, the water will become wholesome. A tour guide was exploring a cave deep in Mount Sodom on the shores of the Dead Sea when he discovered a plant growing in the ultra-saline rocky soil and total darkness. Researchers are still investigating, but the tour guide sees the plant as just another sign that the prophesied revitalization of the Dead Sea is happening right now. On Sunday, Ynet reported that a new type of plant had been discovered in a cave in Mount Sodom on the shores of the Dead Sea. The plant was discovered by Shlomi Labatan, a 45-year-old caving and abseiling guide as he led a group through the cave. Deep underground, Labatan discovered strands he thought had been washed into the cave by recent rains. But when he tugged at the strands, he was surprised to discover that the strands were rooted into the rocks. I suddenly realized that I had found something that was alive, a plant that was rooted in the walls of the cave, Labatin said. He immediately notified scientists at Hebrew University and told them of his discovery. The discovery was surprising for several reasons. The surface of the soil of Mount Sodom is made of more than 95% salt, so it was believed that no plant could grow on or in the mountain. In addition, the cave was in total darkness, meaning the plant would need to be able to survive without photosynthesis. The Ynet reported on an expedition in which Labatan led Professor Zach Adam, a senior botanist from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, deep into the cave. The professor took a sample of the find and is currently investigating. It is still being investigated, Labatan said. They are still unsure of what it is. Labatan is an expert tour guide who specializes in caves and the Dead Sea region. While he says that he does not currently live a religious lifestyle, he learned in yeshiva as a young man and holds the Bible in high regard, seeing prophecy unfolding in the land. Israel is the holy land, he said. I see that whenever I tour the land. I see fish in ponds on the shore of the Dead Sea, which there never were before. I found a plant in total darkness. The crusaders couldn't see the sanctity of the land, so they named it the Dead Sea. The Bible calls it the Sea of Salt. I want to show people that the sea is not dead. It used to be full of life, and it will be again. This process is happening today. The Bible confirms Labatan's assessment of the Dead Sea. When Lot looked out on the valley where the Dead Sea is now, he saw an incredibly fertile and well-watered region. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of the Jordan, that it was well-watered everywhere before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah like the Garden of God. From Genesis 13.10 the Bible relates that the landscape changed when the fire and brimstone destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah turned the valley into a wasteland. Indeed, people who visit the Dead Sea today would find it difficult to envision a garden in the open, arid region. Indeed, the revitalization of the Dead Sea figures prominently in prophecy, which describes water flowing east from Jerusalem into the Dead Sea. According to the prophet Ezekiel, in the end of days, the Dead Sea will be teeming with life. And there he's got this plant that he's discovered. Then he said unto me, These waters issue forth towards the eastern region, and shall go down into the Arabah. And when they shall enter into the sea, into the sea of the putrid waters, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that every living creature, wherewith it swarmeth, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be very great multitude of fish, for these waters are come thither, that all things be healed, and may live whithersoever the river cometh. Ezekiel 47, 8-9 
Lobotin's discoveries have also been covered by Aline, a blogger who addresses the community of Brazilian evangelical Christians. She's made a documentary in Portuguese about the prophetic implications of Lobotin's discoveries. Lobotin was also featured in a documentary produced by Aline describing a scroll found at Masada that contained the dry bones prophecy of Ezekiel. The prophecy describes dry bones coming back to life to praise God. A date seed was also found at the site. Researchers succeeded in reviving the seed and the date palm grew from the 2,000 year old seed in K. Latura near Elat. Of course, we know all about the Methuselah palm tree, the date palm that grew from the Masada seed, and then the sister trees. This was about how Ezekiel's prophecy was manifesting today, Lobotin said, and that species of the date palm no longer exists, but now it has returned to life. I wanted to read an article from Scientific American. Um, this was actually written in 2011, October 9th, by Jennifer Frazier. And it says, Fountains of life found at the bottom of the Dead Sea. For years, ripples at the surface of the Dead Sea hinted there was something mysterious going on beneath its salt-laden waters. But in a lake where accidentally swallowing the water while diving could lead to near instant asphyxiation, no one was in a hurry to find out what it might be. In 2011, some intrepid divers changed that, stumbling onto a geological and biological treasure in capturing it on video. We'll get to that in just a moment. This is the Dead Sea, and as you can see, it appears quite dead. Now at the time, the fish had not appeared in the ponds yet, so they were saying that there were no plants, fish, or any other visible life in the sea. Its salt concentration is a staggering 33.7%, 8.6 times saltier than ocean water, which is only about 3.5% salt. The stones at the water's edge encrusted in salt are a good clue in that department. As a result, the sea is famous for its body buoyancy properties as people who take an exploratory dip generally find themselves riding high on its waters. The Dead Sea is also the lowest point on Earth and getting lower every year as water that would ordinarily fill it by flowing in from the Jordan River has been diverted to quench the thirst of Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. Every year, the lake drops over a meter per year. If this goes on long enough, the sea could face Owens Lakes and Errol's Lakes Sea fate, becoming a windswept salt flat. Yet for now, life goes on. Well, according to prophecy, that'll never happen to the Dead Sea. Biologists have known since the 1930s the lake is not dead yet. Instead, it's full of microbes that get along quite happily in the salty soup, for it keeps out competitors that would take over in a more hospitable, aqueous environment. In general, the water contains 1,000 to 10,000 archaea per milliliter, a much lower concentration of life than in seawater, but quite respectable all in all, for a place where one molecule in three is not water. Occasionally, when conditions are right, the sea blooms red with life. This happened in 1980 and 1992. In any case, divers from Israel and Germany finally braved the waters in 2011 to see what might have been causing the aforementioned contrinsic ringed ripples observed near shore. These are freshwater springs jetting into the bottom of the Dead Sea from inside craters. Found as deep as 100 feet from the surface, the springs lie at the base of craters as large as 50 feet wide and 65 feet deep. As can be seen, a variety of interesting geological formations surround them. The springs roll the waters they flow into into phantasmal slipstream. Starting at about two minutes, you can see it coiling and mixing like it's hundreds of degrees hotter or more sugary than the surrounding water. But no, it's just that much less salty and dense. 
There's a famous scene in the Caves episode of Planet Earth that vividly illustrates salinity gradients, halicleans, in the cenotes of Mexico, too. Go track down a copy of that if you can. What makes this place biologically amazing was the life they found near the plumes. So ha let's have a look at the first Dead Sea underwater diving expedition and see what they discovered down below. And this is credited to Ben Gurion University, the first scientific diving expedition at the Dead Sea. Bacterial mats or biofilms have never been found in the Dead Sea before. You can see the films of green photosynthetic bacteria on top of a rock and a film of white sulfide iodizing bacteria underneath it in the very last scene of the movie. Ionescu further pointed out that all known hardcore halophiles or salt-loving microbes die if you put them in fresh water and vice versa. How these microbes are able to withstand what must be wicked shifts in salinity on an ongoing basis is anyone's guess. This reminds me of the creatures at deep sea vents that must withstand Massive fluctuations in temperature as vent water, hundreds of degrees hotter than the surrounding seawater, shifts back and forth. I'll say it along with Jeff Goldblum once more. Life finds a way. Whatever they are, and scientists are planning to go back and find out more, they are not like the microbes found in the rest of the sea, nor or like organisms that cause the sea to occasionally bloom red. They are very diverse, much more so than their halophilic neighbors. The article also notes that the Dead Sea's waters are particularly caustic and difficult for divers, which as a new diver myself I found particularly interesting, horrifying. In addition to having to weight yourself down incredibly on the order of 90 pounds, when I dove in Hawaii last year I used about 12 pounds. Dead Sea water is not something you want coming into contact with your face, ever. I well recall practicing losing, replacing, and clearing my mask of water at depth when I was getting certified. I guess in the Dead Sea, that's more of the nuclear option in case of leak or wardrobe malfunction. 
Archaea are fascinating and a huge group of bacteria-like organisms that were only discovered in the 1970s by biologist Carl Woese. If you don't know about Archaea, you should learn more. Trust me. In 2016, of course, they had reported um, the precipitous decline in the level of the Dead Sea in recent years is threatening the survival of the Dead Sea tooth carp, a rare species of fish found nowhere else in the world. The Dead Sea tooth carp depends on pools and springs along the Dead Sea cliffs, which are drying up as a result of the lake receding. Concern over the survival of this and other species has led the Israel Nature and Parks Authority to create artificial pools for the fish. And initial efforts look promising, according to a report in the upcoming issue of the Hebrew language journal Ecology and Environment. According to the article written by INPA experts involved in the project, the greatest concentration of rare fish along the Dead Sea is in the Ein Feshka Inot Tzutkim Nature Preserve. The general quantity of spring water reaching the reservoir has not changed, but the way it flows has changed completely because the water is in an area where the Dead Sea has receded and dried up. The flowing water creates channels that undercut the shoreline, causing the springs to emerge in different spots than they once did. To save the species that lived in the springs three years ago, the INPA created three artificial pools, assuming that water will continue flowing to the reserve in the future. The western side of the pools faces other pools and springs in the reserve to allow water to flow naturally into them. The Dead Sea Tooth Carp is now thriving in all three pools, having reach them from other parts of the reserve. It feeds on algae and invertebrates, which means that the ecosystem is a healthy one, the article's authors say. Moreover, 200 fish of a breeding nucleus of tilapia, better known as St. Peter's fish, established at the Agriculture Ministry's Volcani Agricultural Research Facility near Shan Letzion were subsequently released into two of the pools. They now number in the hundreds. The INPA is now working on a similar project at Tel Shaharon in the Jordan Valley. And then there's this cool article from Israel Today. It says, didn't the Bible say something about the Dead Sea coming to life around the time we should expect Messiah? A remarkable thing happened to me as I was studying the book of Ezekiel in preparation for a weekend retreat when a friend forwarded a YouTube clip announcing the most incredible news, which is surely another significant sign of the imminent return of Jesus. One of Ezekiel's famous prophecies, which some people have thought to be allegorical rather than literal, is now being fulfilled just as he said it would be 2,600 years ago. In short, the Dead Sea is coming alive. Fresh water is now flowing into this rift valley expanse that has been unable to support life since the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah thousands of years ago, useful only for drawing tourists to sample its healing properties while floating unsupported. And freshwater fish have now been seen swimming in the surrounding sinkholes that have opened up in recent years as the sea made up of 33% salt has been receding. In chapter 47 of Ezekiel, who prophesied while in exile in Babylon from 597 BC, the prophet describes a vision of an increasingly deep river flowing from the temple in Jerusalem down towards the Dead Sea, bringing new life wherever it flows and supporting the same kind of fish as those inhabiting the Mediterranean. Ezekiel wrote, he said to me, 
This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, the Jordan Valley, where it enters the sea, the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedi to En Gilam. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea, the Mediterranean. That's Ezekiel 47, 8 through 10. Well, of course, Jesus told the disciples that they would be fishers of men. So maybe it has something to do with the end times with the Messiah and the fish that he's caught. The vision comes amid the latter part of the book dealing with the promised restoration of the Jewish people, both to their land and their Lord. And I believe the resurrection of a dead stretch of water reflects a time near the end of the age when the fortunes of Israel, long forsaken and persecuted, would be turned around. This is what the world is now witnessing with the Jewish state emerging as a major player on the world scene with a thriving economy born out of extraordinary innovation. At the same time, there is a growing movement of those who believe that Jesus is the long-promised Jewish Messiah, fulfilling the word that when the Jews are finally restored from all the nations to which they were dispersed because of forsaking God's ways, they would be given a new heart and, as with the Dead Sea, cleansed and sprinkled clean of their sins in Ezekiel 36 24 through 26 you can be sure that all prophecy of scripture will be fulfilled to the letter around three quarters of Ezekiel's predictions 81 percent of Bible prophecies on the whole have already been fulfilled with pinpoint accuracy take for example his prophecy of Tyre's downfall the eastern Mediterranean fishing port would, he said, one day be raised to the ground and thrown into the sea, and the bare rock where it once stood would become a place for fishermen to dry their nets. No other city before or since has ever been thrown into the sea, writes author and Bible teacher David Pawson in his masterful work, Unlocking the Bible. When Alexander the Great came marching down towards Egypt with his great army, the people of Tyre simply got into their fishing boats and sailed to the island half a mile offshore, knowing that Alexander had an army, but not a navy. But when Alexander saw this, he commanded that every brick, every stone, and every piece of timber in the city be used to build a causeway to the island, after which his army went across and defeated the people of Tyre. Even today, fishermen's nets are spread out on the bare rock of old Tyre, as Ezekiel prophesied, while the modern city is out on the island with sand having silted up against Alexander's causeway. If it's in the Bible, you better believe it. Ezekiel had also a profound impact on my personal life almost exactly 18 years ago when a verse from chapter 9 confirmed to my then new girlfriend Linda that she would marry me. I was widowed at the time and she asked the Lord for assurance as to whether I was the right choice for her life's partner and he subsequently spoke to her heart directly from a rather obscure verse which told of a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit on his side. Ezekiel 9 2. The Lord then said to her, I want you to support the man with the writing kit. And of course, I'm forever grateful for that. I couldn't believe the extraordinary change in her demeanor towards me when I next called at her home. She had heard from the Lord, and that changed everything. But we can all be assured that God is returning to his holy city because the end of this prophetic book actually tells us that it will be named The Lord is There. A wonderful thought also reflected in Charles Wesley's hymn on Christ's return, which includes the majestic line, God appears on earth to reign, Zechariah 14.4. A river of life from God's throne is also depicted on the last page of the Bible in the book of Revelation, which is all about what will happen in the days immediately preceding the second coming. The biblical symbolism of life from the dead relates both in Israel and see Romans 11:15 and their Messiah we are living in momentous times that could well usher in the return of our Lord Jesus watch and pray 
so that you and your loved ones are not caught unawares. And that was from Charles Gardner, author of Israel the Chosen, available from Amazon, Peace in Jerusalem. And it was posted israeltoday.co.il. While we see all evil and corruption all about every day in the news and being overwhelmed by all of these terrible reports and just liars and schemers left and right, let's keep our focus right down the middle in the path of the Lord and looking towards the coming of our beautiful King Messiah because the days of Satan's evil are coming to an end and the prophecy is coming to pass before your eyes. I hope that this brought you some joy and a little bit of excitement to see a few things that are happening that are leading to the very soon coming of the Lord Jesus. I pray for all of you guys and I'll see you later. I hope you enjoyed this. Until the next video, I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.